Welcome to another edition of Worldview. My name is Maggie. And my name is Molly. Pakistani officials have destroyed the house where Osama bin Laden was killed. Construction workers broke through 3,000 square meters of perimeter wall and then started to destroy the house where bin Laden and his family were living. The site had been off limits and under for surveillance for many months. The Pakistani government is still not responded to questions about whether or not they knew bin Laden was living there. In Kabul, Afghanistan, deadly violence continues. Two American soldiers have been shot and killed. The shootings and other violence were sp sparked when the members of the American mil uh, military burned copies of the Quran, the Muslim holy book. There have been skirmishes between police in the streets of Kabul. Public buildings and stores have been wrecked. 21 Afghanis have died in the violence. International nuclear inspectors have said that, that Iran has been quickly moving to produce nuclear fuel at a deep underground site. Israel and the United States have said that the location is impossible to attack. Over the past three months, Iran has tripled its production capacity for fuel needed to make the core of a nuclear weapon. Iran has promised that the nuclear program is solely directed at peaceful energy production. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton has recently stated that all Syrians who still support President al-Assad should turn against him. It is estimated that 7,500 people have been killed in the last 11 months in fighting between rebels and troops of Pre President Assad. The government still has not allowed Red Cross teams into homes where the most intense fighting has taken place. Many people, including representatives of the United States, are working to find a way to get Assad out of the power. Leaders of a large number of nations are calling on Syria's government to halt its attacks on rebellious cities so that humanitarian aid can be brought in and let, out the, and let the innocent out. The relentless crackdown on protesters has frustrated world leaders. President Obama spoke on this issue on Friday, saying that we are going to continue to keep the pressure up and look for every tool available to prevent the slaughter of innocents in Syria. Members of the militia in Libya are illegally holding two British journalists and are refusing to hand them over to authorities and international aid workers. The militia captured them while the two were driving around at night and taking photos. They were later accused of not having the proper immigration papers. North Korea has a new dictator, 21-year-old Kim Jong-un. The new reign has announced the, the suspension of all nuclear weapons testing. They have also agreed to allow international inspectors to monitor North Korea's main nuclear reactor, and they will stop launching long-range missiles in return. The United States has agreed to provide 2,400,000 2, metric tons of food to North Korea, a country suffering from food shortages. China has announced that they will raise their defense budget by 11%. According to a spokesperson for the National People's Congress, China's military strengthened its use only for safeguarding its territory and national sovereignty. China, however, has vowed to use force against Taiwan if it ever sought independence. China also has claimed a large portion of the South China Sea as its own territory. This could cause conflict with other nations who have claims on this area. Recently, the last missing American service member from the Iraqi war was found. Ahmed Aitai was serving as a translator for the U.S. military when he was kidnapped six years ago. He had just left the Green Zone in Baghdad when he was captured. Vladimir Putin has won another election as president of Russia. He won the 65% of the votes. Many Russians, however, are not happy with the results. Thousands of people formed a 10-mile line in Moscow to protest irregularities in the vote counting. In one Russian village, it was reported that there were more ballots in the ballot box than voters in the village. Adam has this, Adam has this week's editorial. The number of American soldiers that died in the Iraq War was 4,486. Thanks to WikiLeaks, we now know that the accurate number of uncensored civilian deaths was above 113,000 people. Unlike our soldiers, 
The Iraqi civilians never signed a waiver expressing their will to risk their lives in a war zone. With more than 113,000 Iraqi civilians dead in the crossfire of our own American guns, we should begin to understand why civilians in the Middle East are scared of Americans and want them to leave. The Iraqi people have experienced more than 36 times the casualties of the September 11th attacks, which we as Americans so vividly remember. Both American and Middle Eastern civilians have been dramatically affected by these recent wars. But now we are blaming these tragedies on each other as civilians, instead of the governing bodies who actually decided to unleash the horrors. Due to misguided racism, it is a dangerous and daring decision to be a Muslim living in the United States. This war is no reason for Americans and Middle Easterners to be racist towards each other. Now here's school service news. The third term is just starting, which means it's the last term to finish earning your service hours. Coming up this term, there will be Strokes for MS, Box City, and the Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure, as well as other service projects. Get excited and sign up. That's all there is for service. Here's Hannah for Sports News. Thanks, Maggie. Spring sports are off to a fantastic start so far. The boys lacrosse team had an amazing win over Davidson County on Tuesday. Henry had 14 saves in the net and took home the game ball. The girls' soccer team won their first game against High Point Christian, 2-0 on Tuesday, with both goals scored by Izzy. On Tuesday, the golf team won their first match with High Point Christian as well by five points. The track team had their first meet on Wednesday. The Think Pink Gymnastics Invitational was last weekend, and Summit had a total of eight first places, with Level 4 winning the first place banner. Be sure to congratulate all the teams and come out to support your Screaming Eagles. Now it's time for El Tiempo Aguilas. Buenos dias amigos, me amo Juan. Y yo me amo por Dios. Bienvenidos al programa El Tiete Tiempo Aguilas. Está el pronóstico para el fin de semana. Viernes, la temperatura alta es de 59 grados con mucho lluvia. Sábado, la temperatura alta es 59 grados va a estar silado. Domingo, la temperatura alta es de 56 grados con mucho sol. Qué bien, necesito llevar una chaqueta, camisa, Pantalones, calcetines, y zapatos. Es todo por ahor. Adiós. Thanks to everyone who helped with this week's production of Worldview. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, and watch again next week. Have a great weekend.